Beverly Suburban. We're at the GM Heritage Museum. They're open three hours for private club tours only. There's so much to see here. It's in Sterling Heights in a nondescript giant steel and brick facade warehouse. They've got Cadillacs and Buicks and Olds and a couple of Fords and lots of Corvettes and some T-Rocks. And I'm making this video specifically for my buddy Gas Subwild. It's a 1990 Suburban, the second to last year of production. Two-tone, half-ton with some 235 miniature radial tires. It's got 8,000 miles. Low mileage, fully loaded, almost. It's got the dumb electric mirrors that are too far back on the door. The four-spoke steering wheel that started appearing on the newer independent front suspension trucks. It's only got 8,000 miles. Step bumper, barn door, rear air spoiler, but it doesn't have the roof rack. It doesn't have the quad front shocks. It doesn't have the three leaf spring suspension, but boy, is this thing clean with only 8,000 miles, 14,000 kilometers. The headliner's not sagging. Seat belts show a tiny bit of wear, and they should trim those threads off. Gotta be fussy if you're running a museum. But it's their museum, not my collection. They've got so many beautiful trucks and cars and El Caminos and four-wheel drive conversion pickup trucks, 1963 K20, 67 Deluxe El Camino, 396 with a domed hood, but it's not an SS. It's in Plum Mist, which was a U.S. not available in U.S. color on the Corvairs. It was only available in Canada in Plum Mist, but they made it on the Impalas and the Chevelles, made it available. 59 El Camino, there's so much to see here. This is a six cylinder power glide. Now you know why Pontiac went with the wide track look. Get those wheels to the outside a little bit. Beautifully restored. Got a bumper guard thing with the boobies and cranberry red 70 Chevelle El Camino SS 396 with air conditioning. This is a beautifully restored car. The interior is not quite right. Those seats should be pulled back a little bit. Some of these restored cars just don't have the exact factory perfect look. Here's a Pegasus, which is a 1970 Firebird concept with a V12 Ferrari engine. And that domed back window they put on in 19... what was it? 78, 79? This is a 1970, and it's a cross between a Ferrari and a Firebird. It's got Ferrari gauges and leather interior, real leather, and a five-speed from a Ferrari. And you can't really see the engine, but it's a V12 Ferrari. GM had the deep pockets, big bucks, to make a Firebird concept with a V12. There's a 2004 Chevy Nomad concept. All kinds of interesting things here. There's a 70W30 Cutlass and a Mako Shark Corvette. Wow, with a ZL1. Is that a 427 all alloy? Tachometer's in a really good place. The head of the console. There's so much here to look at. It's just a crazy place. Manta Ray. Looks like it has a tilt front end. ZL1, that's where the domed hood came from on the 68 Camaro or 60, 68 and the 69 Nova had those little louvers in the hood. They didn't have the raised part of the hood on the Nova, just the Camaro. These look like 71 Riviera door handles and this is a Mako Shark, which is a 61. It was created for Bill Mitchell. Yeah, William Mitchell. It's got a 69 427 ZL1 425 horse, ha, more like 499 horsepower, 500 horsepower. 1961, it's a solid axle Corvette XP. Never seen a dash like that in a Corvette, have you? With an armrest only for the driver and it's cupped. So you can stick your arm in there and hold on tight. Leather wrapped steering wheel, ignition key in the console, and the automatic transmission selector is. Park, reverse, neutral, drive, super low. What's it got for a transmission? The Turbo 400, which wasn't introduced until the 64 model year. This is a 61 
It's painted just like the Mako Shark he caught, 53 Corvette. This is maybe a 60, yep. 63 split window, a 65 maybe, a 69, and a Greenbrier in the last year Corvair. But this was done up for uh, Bill Mitchell. The 69 Corvair was modified for Bill Mitchell, head of GM design. There's just so much to look at here. Oh my, Corvettes, and experimentals, and electric, and hydrogen, and V12 Cadillacs, and model cars. <sighs> my, my, my. They wish you just could have one of all, one of each. Have them all. Knockoffs, 63 split window, 427. This would be a 66. Yeah. The Mark IV Mystery Motor, 425 horse Corvette Stingray. Teakwood wheel, knockoff, 69 Corvette in Fathom Green, is that? I'm not sure what this color is. That one looks like it's done up in pearl white. We've got some concept vehicles. We've got a 69 Corvair with 40 miles and the first Chevette ever made and the first Vega, Vega number one. Does anybody care about Vega number one? We've got 35 more minutes till they throw us out. The Super Spider concept on the cover of so many magazines like car and driver, back in the day, shortened wheelbase, two-seater, first Vega ever built, job one. Cute wheels, huh? Just like the Z28 wheels that would appear in 71 with five lugs on the Chevelle and the Z28 and 76 Chevette. I think this is job one also, isn't it? Yeah, the Chevette. Oh man, did they make a lousy car. They had a good strong motor, but door hinges were welded on, shock towers would rust off, and <sighs> thermo guard protected. Yeah, the Chevrolet Chevette. I had one of these. I had an Acadian four-door with a diesel, a Zuzu diesel engine. 110 Corvair, and they've got a ramp side, and the Job 1 Vega, and the first built 1966 Toronado. Job one. It's got TFD tires, Tornado front drive tires. It's a standard model with a smooth bench seat and roll down windows. It's got telescopic steering and an AM radio and a power antenna and the chrome wheels, no side marker lamps. Job one, the first built 1966 Tornado. You'd think it would have been a loaded deluxe interior model and a turbocharged jet fire and a pace car 72 Cutlass. <sighs> Breathless. Four door hardtop, 57 old, Super 88. Oldsmobile, not your father's Oldsmobile. What else we got here? Take a fast tour around, there's just so much to see. This does not have the polished windshield wipers, which were standard in 67. The 66 you thought would have had the chrome or polished stainless windshield wipers. This has got a tilt back end, or yeah, clamshell. Opens up right there. We saw this last year, turbocharged, shortened wheelbase, super spider. Check out those wheels. Are they knockoffs? Halibrand Engineering, Culver City, California. Red fender wells that you'd see on the 70 Cutlass W30s. Corvette, remember this one? Rotary engine? Wasn't to be. It's got a mid-engine, sideways, transverse mounted. Small block Chevy with a Rochester Quadrajet. And some type of electronic ignition that Pontiac offered in 69. I think I've got one of those, a busted one though. And the radio's in the console, automatic shift. No rotary engine for you, Monza SS. And the Monza GT, cars that you would have seen on the, in your favorite magazine on the cover. That's a 1962. And it's low to the ground. Corvair was special because the rear engine air cooled meant you could have a very low front end, no radiator to worry about, no cooling problems. As long as you kept your fan belt at the proper tension, not too tight. Knockoff wheels made by Kelsey Hayes. Of course, this is so low to the ground. How do you sit in those seats? Hmm. Nice big gauges right in front of the driver and a Wonder Bar radio. AM, of course. 
1962 Corvair Monza GT Concept. I can't keep up, there's so much to see here. 1963 Corvair Monza SS Concept. Six carburetors and a modified exhaust. And what the heck is this? The Firebird 3 and the Firebird 2. We've got the 59 Cadillac had a big set of fins. Look at those babies. This is a Chevy Vega. Oy Vega. 1973 XP898 on the cover of Road and Track magazine. It's got a miniature cowl induction hood and Corvette seats and the shifter mounted way up by the dash. Just kind of a two-seater Vega sports car. It had a Cosworth four-cylinder engine that they did offer with fuel injection in 74, 75. Yeah, remember those? The Cosworth Vega. 69 Trans Am. One of 697 built. And this looks like some kind of Corvette. I don't even know what this is. Reynolds Corvette Experimental. All alloy, aluminum. And a 77 Grand Prix. And the Judge 69. And a 65 GTO. And a 64. And oh, which way do you go? There's so much to see here. I hope this video posts. Plum Mist 67 GTO. Production peaked in 66. And the Roadrunner came out. And the Fairlane GT 390 64. Le Mans GTO. Post Coupe Two Door. 47 Pontiac Streamliner. What the heck is this? Astro One Concept. Oh my, my. 1968 Chevrolet Astro Two Experimental. Recognize those wheels from that Mako Corvette that appeared later on on the Berlinetta. So much to see here. I'm going to post this video and hope you enjoy it. It's just a crazy place. Only open to private club tours by invitation only. Not open to the general public. $10 to get in. Open from 10 to 1, but only if your car club is nice enough get you in urethane wheels to this great GM Heritage Museum. We're glad to be here.